What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we will create a simple API authentication system but it will be a little bit different this time since we will use ChatGPT to generate it for us. Quick pause. I'm currently working on a new Udemy course where I will dive into Laravel databases and Eloquent. If you think that there is a topic that should most definitely be included, feel free to drop it down below in the comment section. If you would be interested in the course or you just want to support the channel, make sure that you follow me on either Twitter, Instagram or YouTube to be the first one to find out when the course gets released. Before we start off with this tutorial, I have to mention that there are some requirements before you could watch this video that I won't be showing. I'm not going over the process of setting up ChatGPT, but I'm going to start off without a Laravel application and see how far we could go. I'm also not going to set up Postman, but it is handy when working with APIs. A couple days ago I decided to give ChatGPT a try and I got to say, it blew my mind and I found it very fun to use. As a developer, I mostly try to search coding related stuff and honestly, it was pretty accurate when it came to creating simple applications. Of course, there needs to be some tweaking here and there, but who cares, it helps developers, especially new developers, quite a lot. At the moment, I have ChatGPT open and we obviously need to make sure that we create our Laravel application. So let's ask ChatGPT how we could do that. Let's say, how can I create a Laravel application? Interesting. It replied back with two options. We could either install the Laravel global installer and perform the Laravel new application name command, or we could run a composer command to create a new Laravel application. Let's just go with the composer option right here. Let's navigate back to the CLI. Let's paste the command, but let's navigate back to ChatGPT for a moment, because it's also telling us that the app-name inside the composer command is the name of your new application. So let's rename it to odd-chatGPT. Once we hit enter, you'll see that a new Laravel application is being created. Give it a moment. All right, let's reopen ChatGPT, because it's also telling us that once the installation is done, you can run the development server by running the php artisan serve command right here. Let's do that. Let's paste it in. Whoops, excuse me. We need to change the directory into our newly created project, which is odd chat GPT. And then we need to paste our command. Excuse me. Once we hit enter, it will spin up our server by adding the local host right here. So inside the browser, I'm going to change the URI to my local host, which have spin up a Laravel application for me. Usually when I create a new Laravel application, the first thing I do is setting up my database and database credentials inside a .env file. Let's see which method ChatGPT prefers. Let's open it again. Let's ask him how to create a database for Laravel applications. All right, ChatGPT generated a pretty in-depth response for us. And the one thing that I like right here is the fact that it's telling us that there are multiple ways on how you could create your database. It's telling us that this can be typically done through the web hosting control panel or by using a tool such as phpMyAdmin. Then it's pretty much expecting you to create your database. And I actually expect that too, because Laravel is a PHP framework. And once you have mastered PHP, you pretty much know how to set up your MySQL database. So let's make sure that we create our database first before we move on to the second part. Let's navigate to iTerm, let's create our database. Let's say create database, let's name it odd underscore chat GPT, and let's exit it. Once we open it again, you can see that it's telling us that we need to configure our .env file in the root of our application, where we need to change up the database configuration variables. So let's do that. I've already opened my project in PHPStorm. So let's open the .env file and let's change up our database credentials where I only need to change my database name to odd underscore chat GPT, where the password is dari1234. If we then open chat GPT again, it's telling us that we need to run our database migrations through the PHP artisan migrate command. You can also create new migrations, which we don't need at the moment since we're simply going to create an authentication system where we only need the user's table. So let's navigate back to iTerm, change our directories to our authentication chat GPT directory, paste the PHP artisan migrate command, where you'll see that the four migrations that Laravel asks by default have been migrated. Now let's move on to the next step by defining our authentication scaffolding. 
And I'm not going to tell ChatGPT which one you should use, but I'm going to let him find out which one is the best. So let's open ChatGPT again. And let's say that we want to ask him what is the best authentication system for Laravel APIs. Pretty interesting response right here. It's pretty much telling us that there are many scaffolding authentications for Laravel applications, and it's telling us that we should use a JWT authentication provider through a package which is not from Laravel. The second method is Laravel Passport, which is an OAuth service system. And looking at the answer, I can tell that ChatGPT is not 100% up to date. Nowadays, it's either Laravel Passport or Laravel Sanctum, which you should use for authentications in APIs. So let's specify our question a little bit more because I want to see how long it takes before it suggests Laravel Sanctum. So let's say popular Laravel API authentications. Now the reason why I want to use Laravel Sanctum, because I recently created a project in Laravel Sanctum where I created a simple authentication system and I want to generate the same functionalities using ChatGPT and compare it to my own code. Now right here, you'll see that the popular Laravel API authentications, Laravel Sanctum is number one, which is a lightweight package for API authentications in Laravel. It allows you to authenticate your single page applications, SPAs, and mobile applications using Laravel's built-in authentication features. Another interesting response is the fact that it's saying that the best choice will depend on your specific use case requirements and what you need to achieve. And I do completely agree with this statement because a lot of people just blindly follow what other people say, but they don't know the full requirements of the projects you're working on. So let's actually say what are single page applications? Because it's saying that Laravel Sanctum is a single page application, but it's not really explaining what it does. All right, that's a pretty in-depth explanation of what the SPA is. And a single page application is a type of web application that loads a single HTML page and dynamically updates the content as a user interacts with your application. So you're basically creating an API where a front-end developer can make use of in the front-end through JavaScript. It also adds a couple benefits right here and a good thing is the downsides as well. Now let's ask ChatGPT how we can install Laravel Sanctum by saying how to install Laravel Sanctum. Now let's scroll back to the top because ChatGPT is using data from 2011 and since Laravel pretty much comes out with a new version every one or two year, the documentation that you see right here is old and I think that it is related to Laravel 8 because since Laravel 9, Laravel Sanctum has been added by default inside your application. So let's navigate back to PHPStorm, open our composer.json file, and right inside of the require section, you'll see that Laravel Sanctum has been required by default. So let's open ChatGPT again. And once the installation has been done, we need to run the PHP migrate command, which is all right. We need to configure Sanctum by adding the Sanctum service provider to our configuration file. So let's do that. Let's copy this piece of code right here. Let's open the convict directory app.php, scroll down, and right here inside the providers, we simply need to add the Sanctum service provider. Now, once we navigate back, you'll see that we need to add the has API trait to our user model, which has also been done by default. Now let me close off my notifications. Right here, you'll see the as API token trait, which is coming from Right here, the Laravel Sanctum has API tokens class. Now the fifth step has been done by default now as well, is configuring the course. And we don't need to generate personal access tokens through the CLI because we will do that through Postman. Now let's move on to the next step because I want to work on the authentication system. Now let's say generate a login controller for Laravel Sanctum API. All right, this is a pretty in-depth answer, so let's start at the top. It's basically telling us that we need to generate a login controller by performing the PHP Artisan make controller, a subdirectory called alt, and a login controller. So let's navigate to the CLI. Let's paste it right here. All right, it has successfully been created. Then for the third step, it's telling us that we need to add the following code inside our login controller. So let's actually copy the entire code. 
Let's navigate to PHP Swarm. Let's open our HTTP directory, controllers, odd login controller. And let's paste the code right here. Now let's actually go over the code before we move on with registering the route and testing it out in Postman. And the explanation I'm gonna give right here, it comes from the documentation it has added right here at the bottom. You'll see that the login method will accept the request object right here, which will contain the user's email and password, which will be added through Postman. Right here, it's validating the email on required and that it needs to be an email and a password. Then it's creating a new variable called credentials and it's grabbing the email and password coming from the request. It's gonna make an authentication attempt. If it can make the authentication to attempt, it will define a new user, which has been created. It creates a new token based on the user that is trying to log in and it will return a response of that user object and the token with a status 200 code. Now, if the if statement doesn't pass, it will basically return a response, a JSON response with an error saying that the user is unauthorized with a status code of 401. Once we navigate back to ChatGPT, you'll see that we also need to make sure that we add our routes inside the routes.api file. So let's copy what we have right here, go back to our code editor, open the routes directory, api.php, paste it right above the route that we have, and right here, it's making a post request to the forward slash login endpoint, and it's calling the login controller where it has the login method. Now we're not gonna perform the request yet because we need to make sure that we register our user first before we can log in. So let's navigate to ChatGPT, and let's say that we want to create a register method. Generate register controller for Laravel Sanctum API. So let's scroll back to the top. It's telling us that we need to make the controller inside, that's nice, the odd directory register controller. So let's do that. Let's paste it right there. Then it's telling us that we need to paste the register controller inside ours. So let's do that as well inside PHP Storm. And let's go over the code right here. Once again, it's accepting the request object. It's validating the name, email, and password and it's gonna create a user based on the name, email, and password. Then it's also gonna create a token for a user and returns a response. Now we do need to register the route and I've already saw that in ChatGPT right at the bottom, right here. Let's navigate back to PHPStorm for one more moment. Open the api.php file, paste it right here. Well, this can go inside the use statement and we have our register endpoint. So let's navigate to Postman and I've already opened it. Let's enter our URI of 127.0.0.1. The port is 8000 forward slash API forward slash register. It's gonna be a post request. We do need to add headers, which is accept, which is application, JSON, and the content type as well, which will be application, APA JSON. Then we need to add a body of form data where we have a name of Dari. The email is info at darinazar.com. Well, the last one will be our password, which will be test12344 forward slash. Now let's navigate back for a moment because I do want to double check something real quick. All right, there's no need to confirm the password, which is a downside, but it doesn't matter. Let's click on send. And right here, you will see that it returned back with our user object with a generated token. Now looking at our controller right here, actually both of the methods, I do have to say that I'm surprised about the code it has generated for us. You would have think that it will be the most basic code ever, but it has implemented some validation. Is it the best? Most definitely not. I have a tutorial where I create a complete authentication scaffolding from scratch using Laravel Sanctum. And I actually want to compare both codes together right now. So I'm gonna change my screen magically where I have ChatGPT's codes on the left and my own code on the right. All right, now let's start off with the login method. And the biggest difference right here is that I created the auth controller where I added a login and register method in one controller, while ChatGPT decided to create a auth subdirectory with the login controller and the register controller inside of it. Not really a difference. I think I personally even prefer ChatGPT's its method. Then for the login method, I decided to create a login user request, which will basically handle the validation 
inside a different class. And that's mostly because I try to keep my controllers clean by just simply getting data and sending data to the view. For the validation part, it's pretty equal. I'm just testing it on being a string and I need a minimum of six characters whenever a user tries to log in. Not really a big difference. Then ChatGPT creates a variable called credentials, which is basically the email and password from the input fields in Postman, while I pass it directly back inside the if statement, which in my opinion is a little bit cleaner because you don't do anything else with the credentials variable. It's simply for the check right here. The same goes for whatever happens inside the if statement. It gets the user object. I try not to use the odd facade right here, but I went directly with the user model where I got the user based on the email. And it created a variable called token, which could basically be directly sent back inside the response, which I have done right here as well through the user object. Now ChatGPT also didn't create a request for the register method right here because it's validating it inside the register method while I decided to create a store user request. And the only thing that's really bothering me right here, I don't mind that it hasn't added a string and the maximum amount of characters for the name, but the password does bother me because it's basically not confirming it like you could have seen in Postman right here. There's no need to add the password confirmation key. Then if we go back, You'll see the same thing happens down below. A user object gets created with the name, email, and password. And you'll see that it's encrypting it right here. And what I'm basically doing right here is saying that there are certain rules that needs to be matched because it's a password. And that's not happening inside the ChatGPT generated code. You could basically add the password of 1234 and it still works fine. Which in my opinion is a huge downside because validating emails and password is probably the most important thing when it comes to logging in and registering users. Now let's navigate back to the auth controller where we have our user object where we're pretty much doing the same thing. I'm using the hash facade while ChatGPT uses bcrypt. Don't really see a difference right here. Runs again, it's creating a token variable while I'm sending it back directly inside our response. Now there are some flaws, but that doesn't mean that this is a great starting point right here. There is no need to write everything yourself. You could easily generate code and refactor it a little bit. Now this was it for this tutorial where we have created an authentication system using ChatGPT. Once again, I'm working on a database as an eloquent course, which I will publish on Udemy. If you want to stay updated, make sure that you are subscribed on YouTube and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. This was it for this video. If you do like my content and you want to see more, please hit that like button. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.